Welcome viewers, this is your, your host Nurse Rosalie Odiambo on Skills vs. the Midwife. So today we are going to have a very interesting segment, the Student Nurse Midwife segment. And uh, it's uh, called the Amids the Heroes. Okay, Amid is the heroes, and today we are going to record and we are going to talk about the, the, the student nurses who go out there, they work, they, um, they experience, and they are able to take care of our clients in labor wards. And sometimes what they are able to achieve, no one speaks about them. So I welcome you all to this segment, and uh, maybe just to do a brief introduction. Uh, we thought about uh, this segment, Amid's Heroes, because uh, you realize that our students, when they go through their, their theory, when they are back in school, and they are now introduced to this clinical setup, they tend to have issues in the transition process. Now, if they are not assisted, they get a lot of challenges because of the support system. Now, this can be due to various factors, but again, let me take you back to the ICM essential competencies. There are various uh, competencies at different levels, all the way from uh, the pregnant woman coming down to labor and delivery and during the postpartum period and the newborn. And all these competencies will only be achieved if, for example, let's talk about the support system. If we are not able to get the support system, there is no way this student is going to shine and be able to experience that which they are able to experience and be able to provide the services well. Talk about the knowledge base. Yes, yes, they have learned in class, but when they come down on the ground, when they don't uh, practice that and uh, make sure that it's translated now in their service delivery, then it becomes an issue. Other factors could include exposure and even the environment of learning. And finally, and the most important one, is the personal initiative. If you're not willing to learn as a student, there is no way you're going to learn and actually acquire those skills that are required in the clinical area. So let's come together. I have a guest today. I have a guest today. Welcome very much. You will Thank introduce you. yourself. My name is Wamboy Jane Chuguna. I'm an assistant student in Kenya Methodist University. My origin or where I come from is Nakuru County and my clinical placement on labor and delivery units was in Meru Teaching and Referral Hospital. Thank you very much, Jen. Welcome to this segment. And uh, what I would like us to understand is this. Jen is going to give us uh, what a memorable experience she had during her clinical placement. And today, like I said, we are going to acknowledge, we are going to accept, we are going to recognize the fact that even students can learn. And when they learn, they can pass on the knowledge. And our basis for being here today is to encourage one, two, three students. And even the staff who are out there and the lecturers out there, we can learn something from this experience. So Jen, take us through. Uh, I understand uh, that you got to deliver uh, one of the obstetric emergencies that was called prolapse. Do you want to share your experience on that? Yes. So um, I prepared myself together with my team as we were going for a night shift. So our nurses, our certified nurses in Meru Teaching and Referral Hospital took a break and went to take their supper. So we had to take the responsibility, take the mantle and take care of the clients who are to be attended to in that short period. So a client um, came who was para five plus zero we, we noticed that she had a pendula, pendulous abdomen mm. as, because um, when we did the abdominal examination, we identified only one fetus. So we did the physical examination and um, for us, as you receive a mother in labor and delivery unit, you need to um, you need to do vaginal examination to ascertain or to confirm the findings you did on your abdominal examination. So when we did um, the vaginal examination, we identified something that was very unusual, abnormal to whatever we were experiencing before. So when we did the vaginal examination, we identified a soft, round, um, been and uh, with thinking and knowledge that we acquired in our class we we knew this is a code but um, 
we knew it was a cord and now we needed to know the difference if it, if it was a cord product or a cord presentation. So the membranes were, the, the membranes were not intact. So we knew it was a cord product and it was um, an overt kind of a cord product. So uh, that is an, obstet uh, an obstetric emergency and we had to call for help after calling for uh, when when one of us so Jen, one, so Jen, let me to cut you short. Yeah. So at this point, uh, you're here. You're the students. Who, yeah. Were there qualified nurses as well? Yeah. No. At the moment, going. they were not. There. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you were able to yeah. diagnose that this was a cold problem. Yeah. Okay. Proceed. So, um, we one of us went to call for help because it's an obstetric emergency, and that's the first step you have to take. And um, after calling for help, uh, the second, uh, the the rest of us were three. The two of us, we we encouraged the mother to be in a deep nature's position because we knew the um, the effects, the impact that um, the the presenting part has to the cord that that had prolapsed. So uh, we called for help. The certified midwives came. They helped us out. We prepped the mother. We prepped the mother for an emergency cesarean section um, first. And uh, before that, first the we the certified one of the certified midwives had to confirm if, if the cord was pulsating. So she confirmed and the cord was pulsating and the mother was four centimeters dilated. So the mother was in first stage of labor. Mm -hmm. So in first stage of labor, the approach that you take is to immediately prep the mother for an emergency cesarean section. Before um, before you take the mother for, uh, before you take the client for uh, an emergency cesarean section, you need to prep the mother, you need to get an IV access, get blood samples for cross matching and grouping. You need to fill the bladder. The reason for filling the bladder is to maintain a high descent of the presenting part. So you need to fill the bladder, use a Foley catheter and use normal saline. Uh, when the normal saline has dripped to 500 ml, you need to clamp the you, you need to clamp the catheter. So that's what we did, and after that we wheeled the we wheeled the client uh, to theatre with still maintaining the deep um, knee chest position for us to um, avoid compressing the cord. Wow, Jen, I'm impressed. So do you think you could have? Uh independently diagnosed and taken action for example of course this is an obstetric emergency you need to call for help yeah. but if you are in a setup where you are uh, okay there are no many staff and it's in a remote area mm -hmm. do you, would you think that you'd have done this independently and uh, taken help from whatever you could in case yeah mm -hmm. i think i will have done it honestly because um fast by this time, hopefully, this uh, occurrence occurred when we gained confidence mm -hmm. in in doing anything in labor and delivery unit, and also I think uh, my knowledge competence mm -hmm. could, uh, was efficient, and I was so confident of myself to do such a thing. Wow! Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, then you actually just mentioned the word I was looking for: confidence. So yes. The confidence, if the confidence is there and you're sure that the knowledge base is also intact, then I think we can achieve that which we are able to achieve. Now tell me something, Jen. How did the nurses view this whole scenario? You being the people on, 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 on at that particular time, you identified this condition and you went to call them. And actually, after they confirmed, it was really quite prolapse. Mm -hmm. how, how did they react to this? What did they feel? What was their take? What was their view? First, um, Nurses in labor and delivery unit are so committed and once you do something unique, you gain confidence from them and they are so proud because in this uh, nursing career, you need to grow and most of them, especially those who were rotating with that night shift, were old, um, old nurses in comparison. Mm -hmm. So I think they, they told us, 
we feel like we can grow out of this career knowing that we've left the right people in it. Yes, yes, legacy. What are you leaving behind? Have you mentored the other students, the other staff, the young staff? Like she's rightfully saying, these are staff who are, you know, elderly. What have they done? And I, I, what I'm picking from you is that they were able to encourage you and they were able to even support, support you better in other ways so that you can be able to learn. Mm -hmm. So it's true, we can actually be in that position. It doesn't really matter, as long as we have the zeal to learn, we can be able to get the support we require. And the personal initiative is something very important because if you don't have personal initiative, then you will not be able to gain the experiences and the expertise. Remember, competencies are learned and for you to become a professional, then you have to repeatedly do some of these skills and therefore you become the best student nurse or midwife out there. So now, what do you have to tell the other students out there? What can you tell them? So, uh, the most authentic advice I would give any nursing student, any student nurse who is to rotate in labor and delivery units, first um, have the zeal to learn learn and take advantage of any opportunities that come your way. That's the best advice. That's what creates confidence in you as you grow, as one week becomes a month, one month becomes three months for you to rotate in that unit. To be open to learn from others. In the clinical placement, for example, in Miru Teaching and Referral Hospital, you'll meet um, student doctors, you'll meet interns, you'll meet um, KMTC student nurses. Be open to learn from them, hear their stories. For example, if uh, anything like that ever happened to a KMTC student, we will always share, we will always learn from them because once shared, you've, you've saved their lives and that's the core core reason or core goal for us all to save lives and to expand our knowledge yeah Wow, Thank Jen. You. Wow, that is so beautiful to hear and know we're having students who have the passion to actually make sure that this field becomes a service delivery where we can actually change lives and impact the world. So here we are on Skills vs. the Midwife. The segment is Amidis Heroes and this is a hero we are celebrating today, being able to tackle any obstetric emergencies and those are the ones that top the list. So we can become that person who will change that particular person's life in that world. So thank you. Until the next time when we are going to meet, uh, watch us in the next video. See you. Bye.